J.K. Rowling is getting slandered again. I know this isn't really news because it's constantly happening, but her haters have just hopped on a new bandwagon that makes zero sense. Um, they're, they're really going into like full meltdown. If you didn't think they were at full J.K. Rowling derangement syndrome, I think this is it. So I don't know if we're gonna get flagged for saying this, but there's no way around it. They're calling J.K. Rowling a Holocaust denier. And I found this out because actually there is a film adaptation in the works for her kids book, The Christmas Pig. Um, and this announcement says, a film adaptation of The Christmas Pig, a book written by transphobe and Holocaust denier J.K. Rowling, is unfortunately in early development. I can almost respect the complete lack of bias. <laughs> the, the complete the, lack of uh, the complete bias. Yes. Well, Variety tries to hide it, but in their report on this film adaptation, they included a picture of her book on the stands with a half price sticker on the book. There's the those shade shady is, bitches. The shade is real, ladies. Right? Man. Like they, they can't even hide how much they hate her when they're trying to report. Correct. On something like this, but I didn't even know she had a kids book out. So I didn't know about the. I only knew about the Corman strike. Uh, books under Robert Galbraith. Yeah, but she's just raking in the money and living her best life as usual. But I looked into more, why are they calling her a Holocaust denier? And the evidence, or I guess lack thereof, will shock you. Uh, I first saw this retraction tweet from a journalist named Rivka Brown. She said, on the 13th of March, I tweeted that JK Rowling is a Holocaust denier. That allegation was false and offensive. I've deleted it and apologized to J.K. Rowling. There it is. Replies turned off. Yes. <laughs> and that, if anything, sounds like someone who got sued into oblivion by a billionaire author um, with no Fs to give yep. and had to return to their Twitter with their tail between their legs, humiliating themselves because they, you, no one can afford to get sued by J.K. Rowling. She's got all. She's got endless money. It will Literally. just never like, run out. She's like, oh, I'm having trouble suing you. New check came in. Yep. Time and to- every time that someone issues a retraction like this, she trends on Twitter again, and all of her haters just re- they repeat the false allegation because they're trying to spite her. So I looked into this. Why is she being called a Holocaust denier? Here is a screenshot of someone replying to her saying, the Nazis burnt books on trans healthcare and research. Why are you so desperate to uphold their ideology around gender? And she quote tweeted this person saying, I just, how, how did you type this out and press send without thinking I should maybe check my source for this because it might've been a fever dream. And they posted this as proof that she is a Holocaust denier. That's it, that's the evidence. That is it. That is literally all the evidence. And I I mean, I guess that if you really look into that statement, did the Nazis burn books on trans healthcare? I guess in Weimar, Germany, they were doing experimental surgeries on people's genitalia, yes. So taking (laughs) taking modern concepts like transgenderism, the way that people understand it today, and applying them to the 1930s, 1930s Germany is a misrepresentation of what's going on. Like it's a total, because what they're trying to do is they're trying to say, oh, JK Rowling is a Nazi because Nazis attack trans people and she's attacking us. it's just a loose association the experiments that nazis did on people that they considered subhuman were awful but that is not in any way even remotely close to anything that jk rowling is saying it's just that she denies that there are trans people that trans people are are trans people she says it's something else anyways there's a 20 other one here from cody bedrow says cats are disgusting they shit in boxes i mean (laughs) Yeah, but you could say that about dogs. They they shit on lawns. So, there you go. Yeah. yeah. But uh, someone replied to this and asked, where is she denying the Holocaust? This is a question I asked myself. And they said she is denying that one minority was an actual target of the Holocaust. Like if she were to say, quote, Jews weren't targeted during Nazi Germany. Yes. And another one said, maybe not all of it. She seems to see some of it, just not the parts where they censored trans research and killed LGBT people. 
Um, trans research wasn't a thing in the 1930s. No. I mean, I guess the the nascent form of gender ideology was in development at that time, but there was no concept of no. gender affirming care. No, no okay, that's, that didn't exist. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> that's 100% the case. This is like it is taking something completely modern in a context that is only modern and applying it to a time mm -hmm. in the you know almost a hundred years ago it is totally bs and it is only they only do it so that way they can attack jk rowling it's all garbage it's all garbage and it's typical of the left like the left's arguments they are, they are not required to actually be substantial. All they have to do is make people listen and feel something because it's all postmodern BS. The, I love this one from Dr. Quack Factory, which might be the greatest name ever for somebody so stupid. J.K. Rowling is using the threat of terrible U.K. libel laws to intimidate and silence truth tellers. The same laws helped uh, Jimmy Seville, uh, Seville get away with his monstrous acts for decades until his death. Yeah, pretty much the same thing, right? <laughs> Like terrible me? libel laws, meaning you have the ability to sue someone for libel yeah. in the UK. That I don't know. I just it's so crazy to me how th the audacity of these people that they're not afraid of getting sued. Nope. Like we have been they're... kind of careful at times on this show not to say anything that could potentially, in some hypothetical world, get us into legal trouble. Mm -hmm. But they're just out here copy and pasting the same claims about J.K. Rowling that got someone else into a lawsuit. A billion dollars. They're not so scared of that. A lot of money. They, well, the thing is, they probably don't have anything to lose. I mean, yeah, you can, these you can people, sue someone, but... They're, the activists are the people with nothing to lose. That's why we should actually be afraid of them. That There is there is actually substance to that. Well, what did Jimmy Savile do? Uh, I... I don't, I don't know. know. But the, the the point with stuff like this is they'll never leave her alone. And it's the battleground's never going to no. change because she loves Twitter. So yeah, it's always going to be there and it's always going to be a topic of discussion. One thing that I will tell you that she is very, very good at is separating her work like on the professional front. Meaning when you look up Harry Potter, nothing about this stuff comes up. It's mm -hmm. all the front five pages are all how to go, how to get merch. How to go see? Uh, how to go to Harry? How to get involved with Harry Potter World? How to go to Universal Studios? What's going on with the new HBO show? None of this would be up there, and that's why the average person, when people who aren't terminally online, think about Harry Potter, they don't think about these issues because the average person, a normie, doesn't know that any of this is going on. Yeah, I mean, it seems really loud, and and it seems so much more relevant if you're chronically online like we are, but it's not going to break through to the mainstream. People are still going to want to stream uh, the Harry Potter show that's going on HBO. Seville was a BBC pr uh, presenter who was a pedophile. Apparently. The uh, Wikipedia page for Harry Potter, and I'm honestly surprised I don't see anything about J.K. Rowling's political views yeah. on here. Because um, usually they're quite liberal with what they include on Wikipedia yeah. pages, and the so people, to the point where it's just defamatory. And the people that, like... That curate Wikipedia, they're, yeah, they're also turbo very, <laughs> very leftist. You know, you're, you've got straight up commies and Antifa and stuff. So we had a twenty dollar one here from not that John Stewart says uh, Seville was a BBC kids show host who was also a pedophile. It was a BBC open secret. It came out after his death. No one had been oh. held account then or since. Interesting. Oof. Well, that's uh, so. There was a misuse of libel suits. So I guess in that people regard. were threatening to come out and talk about it, and he used their libel laws to prevent them from doing that. So mm -hmm. that's uh, but the, the the point of that tactic is to put her on the same level as him, so that emotionally you don't look at them and see anything different. You're supposed to look at the crimes that he committed and her comments that she just made and see them as the same thing, which are not the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that this is, as you said, never going to stop because J.K. Rowling has Twitter fingers and her haters have Twitter fingers and their battles it's are going like, to continue. It's kind of like Batman and Joker's like, we're destined to do this forever. Right. <laughs> they, Look, it's man, a symbiotic relationship at this point. The social social media, it, when it, especially when it comes to drama stuff like this, like fighting like that, like definitely dudes engage in it but it is built for women right like dudes when they get 
Like, there's a whole lot of dudes, you know, that'll talk smack and stuff. But at the end of the day, when dudes really, really have a problem, they use physical resolution. Yeah. Whereas women are all social and all, you know, using. Shame yeah, and that, that's it. So, social media is designed, whether intentionally or not. It, it, well, social media is the perfect weapon for Correct. women. That's why uh, when you when they talk about uh, was it who is it uh, Jonathan Haidt that would talk about the the problems that teen girls yeah. have yeah. because of how easy it is for girls yep. to be to bully one another yeah. online and social media is making them all sick. Yeah, it's like giving like it's like giving them nuclear weapons. Yeah, it's literally like giving kid like to young girls. It's like giving them like lethal, lethal, lethal weapons to destroy, uh, you know, to destroy their. Their enemies. rivals, yeah. their enemies or rivals or reputations, you know? Mm -hmm. I just can't, like, I, it's, these stories will never end. Like, someday we'll end up covering a topic other than her fighting with people online when the movies come out. Well, I'm and excited then, for when the show comes yes. out. I, not that I'm okay. excited to watch it, but I'm here's, excited for the reaction. But here's another thing to think about. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, those kids are like they're screwed they're, screwed. they're already i know Everyone for a fact is the child actors in the harry potter show right now are currently in media training hell getting told what to say to questions about the author of harry potter yeah what to say about gender issues if they are inevitably asked about that by sinister journalists and they're not being protected the, I mean, the, the best thing that they could hope for is that Warner Brothers, you know, who, who's going to end up producing this stuff, is very, very rigid with who's allowed to ask questions. Yeah, do they have the, the common sense to shut the F up to when protect, it matters? To protect the actors, because not even just to protect the actors, but to protect their investment, because the wrong yeah. thing is going to get it the worst publicity. Yeah. So there's just nothing they can do about that because eventually one of them will do an interview outside of one of these tightly controlled media scrums and it's going to be it's going to be rough. There's a $20 one there. Brewmaster Monk said in 1919 a gay blank named Magnus Hirschfeld opened up the Institute for Sexual Research where he studied the third gender and did the first trans surgeries in 1930. The Nazis shut him shut him down and burned his research and textbooks. Yeah, I saw people in their replies to all those tweets talking about that specifically. And that's what I knew they were referring to, but it's not in any way synonymous with talking about gender affirming care and the institutions that back it in current day. Mm -hmm. Obviously that is not what JK Rowling was thinking about or referring to. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.